I'm Ian Medjugorje and I'm with what's your name? I'm Debbie. And John. And where are you from? We're from uh, United States and Arkansas. And how often have you been in Medjugorje? This is our fifth time. Fifth time. Why do you come back all the time? You tell. There's always something new here. Always. And, yeah. and it's just, this is a great place to be because everybody is, everybody is so friendly and uh, and and so f driven by faith, and it's it's by the Catholic faith, no? Yeah, it's good to be it's good to be among folks like that. Mm -hmm. And for you, what is it for you to be here? To recharge, because after our initial time, then we came. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a I had a beautiful experience actually after we got home, mm -hmm. and uh, so. I walked around on a cloud for like a week, and I thought it was going to be the new me, wow. you know. And uh, what happened? Um, just an amazing the world. <laughs> well, no, no, no. He's asking about what happened that was so amazing. It was just, I just was. We were trying to recover from jet lag, mm -hmm. and I was laying there, and all of a sudden I just said, "Johnny, what was it?" Mm -hmm. And I just started crying and crying and crying, and it was not, you know, tears of sadness. It, but it was bigger than joy, mm -hmm. you know, and the joy was just, I mean, like I said, it was bigger than joy. We had no name for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no name for the feeling, and I just floated, you know, for days and thought it was n the new me, and then I realized it was not going to get to be just Since me. the new you is the one that does all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, How is it for you? It, yeah. it is it's about as close as heaven gets to earth in my in my opinion and and it's just it's just really good stuff to be here we love it here you had a conversion here um i think we maybe a deeper you know just a deeper deepening of our faith i would think don't you think our, our conversion came on a marriage encounter weekend for, for me so yeah. Uh, I was already on the journey before we came here, but yeah, mm -hmm. but tell me about what happened on what our happened marriage at encounter. What happened that marriage encounter? That sounds very. You know, a lot of people look for marriage. Right, here, right, yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, the worldwide marriage encounter weekend mm -hmm. is a communication weekend for couples, mm -hmm. and I really had never really recognized how much Deb loved me until we went on that weekend and how much I loved her and and it uh, it, where, where were you? it broke the it broke the, the the walls between me and God it mm -hmm. really did and yeah uh, he wasn't Catholic for the first Catholic it, yeah for 23 years well pretty much 23 years of our marriage he was not Catholic We've been married now 53, so. Yeah. And he, he celebrates his 30th uh, anniversary in the church on the 10th of October. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Which will still be here. We'll just and, leave the next day. Yeah. And, 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 and what happened that you changed, that you became Catholic then? Wanting to be, uh, putting aside my pride and wanting to be part of something bigger than myself. And uh, it, that was, you know, First John says God is love, and he, and he is. And, and I hadn't really felt that level of love until, until our weekend. And uh, it, it just changed, it changed our relationship. Right. It did. Yeah. How did, yeah. I was going to say, since we did come the first time uh, in October, no, actually November of 2018, mm -hmm. um, we left here feeling a strong a desire to take adoration back to our very small parish in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And um, I told John that uh, we needed to uh, discern that. And uh, so we get home and our parish priest, he, he says, oh, my pilgrims are back, because we'd actually been in the Holy Land in just three days here. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
and Johnny says, yeah, you know, and he says, and, he's, and all of a sudden he turned around and he said, oh yeah, by, by the way, Father, we would like to bring adoration back to church here. Mm -hmm. And I said so much for discernment, because we usually do a five-day discernment for anything. Mm -hmm. And he immediately had told Father we wanted to do it, and we have done that as best we can you know since our, then you have yes, adoration right thing. right yeah. at our little parish here on a, a daily basis a definitely a fruit of Medjugorje definitely mm -hmm. and people come respond uh, not as much as we would love because our parish is very very small it's only maybe 80 families mm -hmm. and uh, maybe on Sundays maybe the last 15 minutes they might come mm -hmm. but we are faithful to it and we think we're called to you yes. know, to do the prayers, you know. The, and it's so yeah. powerful. Oh, absolutely. Adoration. You make it the same experience? Uh, yes, it just, it's just, you know, being able to just be with Jesus every day and make that time for Him. It's just uh, so much more than just, you know, thinking, okay, I'll get a few prayers thrown in today. We just make that effort to go up to our, you know, it's close to the house and we just sit there and and we do some spiritual reading and just sitting with Jesus and it's just been amazing, you know. Wow. I see it in your eyes that you're close <laughs> to Jesus. Yeah. You have that sign, you know, they say here that, that you can see the Our Lady in the eyes of the people, the silent, peaceful joy. Oh, thank you. And, um, and what would you give us advice? I mean, there are a lot of young people that want to get married. What, what is the marriage about? What would you tell them as an advice? How to keep the marriage um, happy? It, don't just invite God to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Invite Him to the life after the wedding. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a very important that it be three and not just two. And I think of the fact that so many people wait and wait and, you know, plan for the big wedding and I think they have to have a house and I mean we know situations where they literally live together first buy a house and then get around to get married and you know we just we don't believe in that because we were uh, poor church mice when we got married and we, you can make it happen you know working together so and with so God's help up. oh yeah and with God's help so and it's a friendship there's a lot of people say it's a friendship same humor yeah yeah yeah, yeah and we, God in the center yeah, now, you know, for the first 23 years, it was kind of kind of difficult. We brought all four of our kids here, too. Wow. Not this time, uh -huh. but previously, yeah. And how did they react to it? Or? Well, th there was moments that they had that I know that Our Lady was trying to talk to them because they're not practicing Catholic, but uh, they kind of went back to the world. So that's why we're at adoration every day. <laughs> Thinking of the kids. <laughs> yeah, what are they yeah, doing at home? Yeah, yeah. So we keep praying for them and, you know, yeah. trust that Our Lady will get their attention when the time comes. That's and our home. Our Lady's a mother, she knows. Mm -hmm. She knows. She, she knows, knows our knows hearts. This, yeah. You know, she knows the heart yeah. of the and if And the thing is, if I love them this much, how much more does she love them? I cannot even compare. Wow, you can yeah. 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 And, um, you know, confession is very important mm -hmm. here. What yes. would you tell people who are scared to go to confession, to tell the priest what happened in their lives, what they did? The priest is just a conduit mm -hmm. for, for Jesus. And you have to recognize that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and just, he already knows, <laughs> but you've got to verbalize it to really turn loose of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it's it's just a very cleansing experience right mm -hmm. and the thing is I think you once you start making the effort to go more frequently mm -hmm. you recognize that your sinfulness you recognize the things that are little they seem little or at one time you might not have even bothered to go to confession for mm -hmm. but it's and when you do go it just it's there's a cleansing that you know you want to do more for Jesus you want to be better for Jesus you want to you really want to get to heaven. I mean, you know, and you, and you, especially after that feeling I had after our first trip, it's like, I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, I want that. <laughs> so anyway, so there we strive for heaven. You know, that's mm -hmm. what we're. And maybe she's implanted that for you, you mm -hmm. know, that you have that yearning to have yeah. it again and again. Yeah. You know? yeah. And you pray the rosary together? Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. It's, we, you and know, the divine mercy. Yeah. We wane sometimes with the rosary, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, we generally get back to it pretty quickly, you know. And uh, sometimes we don't get all four 
in fact, we finally realized that the four uh, complete rosaries was a little bit more than what we could get done, and so we started go going with the three a day, you know. Except on Thursday, we do all four. Yeah, with the luminous as well, which is really one of my favorite is the luminous. Yeah, my, my yeah, 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 yeah I well. really do. It feels like you're kind of walking with Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, here on earth, you know. So. And how, how is the Divine Mercy Chaplet for you? What is so special about that one? You mentioned that one. One of the products of our uh, adoration is that I've read Faustina's journey mm -hmm. two and a half, I'm halfway through my third time, mm -hmm. and her diary, mm -hmm. and uh, it really, uh, she brings to life why Jesus died for us, that redemptive suffering. She suffered a lot, and she offered it all up for others. And it makes you realize what a gift that was. Not only to others, but to her. To be able to take something bad that the world sees as bad and make it something wonderful. And that, you know, that's the thing about Faustina that I really... And, and the divine mercy by that token because you know uh, it just brings Jesus' sacrifice into focus yeah and uh, my, my, my mind went kind of blank there uh, but one of the beauties of the divine mercy was my mother was very devoted to it and she in fact died on divine mercy sunday yeah 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 and, yeah and she had you know we had had to unhook her from you know uh, various means to keep her alive and uh she kept breathing and kept breathing and after midnight i said mom you're gonna get to go home on the divine mercy and it was it was a beautiful beautiful passing and it was just you know i just feel strongly that and i during that time I was there by myself. I deliberately wanted to be by myself with my mother. And uh, so uh, I was playing the Divine Mercy music, you know, and, and saying it with the, uh, singing it. And I did probably three of them. And it was just, it was a beautiful passing. She just opened her eyes like three times. And, and she had been comatose prior to that. And she was just reaching towards something with her eyes. And I said, Mama, you can go. And so, yeah, it was beautiful. So it's just, you know, it's been said that Divine Mercy, if you pray it, you, you know, on, mm -hmm. with someone on their deathbed, that they will, in fact, be with Jesus. You know, so Amazing. that's a blessing. And I think you also should mention, you know, you can do the, the, the Gregorian Masses for the uh, loved ones who, who died. Oh, yeah. I did that for my brother. He died oh, yeah. recently for oh, my yeah. sister. For the living nine Masses, I think, you can do. And you can change a lot in the people. Yeah. Letting priest we forgot this tradition in Germany you know I right. learned it here in Medjugorje right right yeah Maybe to mention that at that point at that right. point yeah there and, there's yeah. so many things that I think the church has left behind yeah you know and we when we get to Medjugorje it reminds us so it just reminds us that you know I mean I was here you know he wasn't Catholic back then mm -hmm. but I was you know before Vatican II and I really have liked Nova Sordo you know because mm -hmm. it I was just a, teen, a young teenager when it came about, and it was beautiful to have mm -hmm. everything in the vernacular and stuff. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm here, one of the things I really love about the Mass is that we always do the, the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei and the Kyrie Eleison, because that's the one thing that kind of holds us all together. And I would wish, I would really wish that that was in all the Masses everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, because we went to Switzerland recently mm -hmm. and we were lost during Mass. It was all in German, mm -hmm. and we know no we don't know any German and mm -hmm. uh, you know until they got to the actual uh, uh, consecration mm -hmm. we were pretty sure we didn't know what was going on from one minute to the next and if we had done the you know those three parts of the mass you know one in Greek and the other two in Latin it would have been a real blessing and it would it I just know that some places that they do try to do that yes. you know and it would just I, I love it I, you know I really love it. beautiful that. that you mention it I mean you know that's we, we are universal right. we are universal church right. you right. have to keep that together that right. people feel at home wherever they go right like my cousin he was in South America Peru and he said you can go to a Catholic math yes and you know you know what's right. going on right yeah. right I know and um, what's your favorite spot in Medjugorje you have like a favorite place favorite spot 
you have a favorite spot that comes to mind? Like Apparition Hill, Cross Mountain, Adoration, the I, I like Blue Cross, you know. The Blue we, we, Yeah, uh, I do like that. In fact, so much so that I had Johnny build me one in our backyard. We've got four acres and he, we've got a Blue Cross in our backyard. Wow, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. We all come to our country yeah, yeah, and we yeah. yeah. go to the Blue Cross. Right, right. There. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And I like the old uh, church grounds. Yeah, me too. I, loved, I love the beautiful, uh, you know, statue in there and just we, we sometimes just take Mm -hmm. We'll go in there and pray part of our rosary. Mm -hmm. We like Father Slavko's grave. Yes, the last, that's nice to know. The last time we were here, uh, we were uh, with a, a group a bit, and they made some mention of the fact mm -hmm. that uh, Father Slavko saw, he never saw a hopeless case. He mm -hmm. believed that no case was hope, hopeless. Wow. And so we've actually uh, given him, well, we've got one son that's with us now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, He's got a mental illness, and we've actually given uh, Father Slavko charge over him. Very yeah. good, and we will pray to the people who are listening, you know. Right, they, right. And our, he, his name's Stephen, and we're hoping he will come back to the church for really for uh, peace of Christ, because mm -hmm. I think he would be happier in the long run if he embraced God again in the Catholic Church. We will all pray. You know? <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's I appreciate right. it. And at the end, what would you tell people why come to Metrogoya? <sighs> You really need to experience it to to know the difference. It's so holy. It's yeah. holy ground everywhere. And uh, that's a friend from Nassau. He said it's not the holy land here, Maryland. This is holy. Right, land. right, it's right. Holy ground. Absolutely. There was some man that came back in uh, he, back in the spring with uh, from Arkansas as well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said that he had brought a group here once before, mm -hmm. and the man was from uh, their parish, mm -hmm. and that one day he just saw this man just looking up at the steeple at their parish in mm -hmm. Arkansas, and they walked up to him, he and his wife, uh, his name's Tim, he walked up to him and he said, well, are you okay? And he goes, why can't it be like that here and he was talking about Medjugorje and I think that that's the hard part of leaving Medjugorje every time because you want everybody to know the joy in our faith and so many people are just doing it by rote yes. you know we and are sad depressed oh out yeah there, you know that's why right. we all do that and try to bring it over right. in your way in my way right know. absolutely so anyway we're we're called to pray in our, you know, in our daily adoration, and we'll keep praying. And maybe with God's help, we'll be able to bring a few priests over, and maybe some of our parishioners. We've actually had a few people that have said, "Oh, I think that we are supposed to go with y'all to Medjugorje." So we're going to tap into that and see. Maybe next step time we'll bring step. some ask, people. <laughs> ask him that, let Jesus yeah. through him, with him, yeah. in him. What's, right. What's right in the, that's the right. secret at the end. Of right. The divine will. Yeah. Thank you so you, much thank you, for that Tom. beautiful interview. <laughs> thank you.